Glory to God, praise and honor to our King. Hallelujah. I hope everybody is doing well this morning. We are in Genesis 1. We're going to start in 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God made man um created sorry god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female hallelujah created he them plural there's no transgender there beloved it, even in the in the ancient hebrew it is them male and female there's no um combining of the genders beloved that's a false false teaching okay so now let's go to Praise the Lord. Oh, so, oh, he said to take dominion. And then in verse 28, he says to subdue it. Replenish the earth and subdue it. Very important. Very, very important information. Um, and God blessed them, he said, and he sent unto them. He said, be fruitful, you know. And he said, um, subdue all things. Take dominion and subdue all things over every living thing. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing fruit. And he talks about all that. We're going to go to um, verse uh, to where is it? Two, to chapter two. Now let's go. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. So Jesus is the Lord of hosts, heavenly host of good things. He created everything good and he blessed them. And he said, You know, you know, bless you, bless the creation, bless. So it's awesome. Jesus blessed his apostles, you know, that just shows who he is from the very beginning. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. And the seventh day ended, the he ended, his work ended, which he had made and the, and re, and the rested, and rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. So we enter into God's rest through Jesus, beloved, as a saint. You enter into rest when you believe in Jesus, okay? And we, some people have to, and even I did it, we all have to. It says in the scripture, we have to strive to enter into God's rest because there's been so many people against that rest and um, bewitching us and wolves in sheep's clothing and tares amongst the wheat, teaching us false teachers, false doctrines, and all sorts of things. And God is helping us to enter into the rest again and i've entered into the rest praise the lord by the glory and grace of god and um, now i am able to bring people into that rest because i had to exercise my own senses i had to crucify the flesh myself you know even though jesus is crucified for us but i had to also um, drop all the weight of sin and i had to run the race without all that stuff and really understand that the spirit um, and what the spirit is and what righteousness is and, and walking in that righteousness, not by the flesh, not by the works of the flesh, but by the spirit. And he was from the beginning in Genesis one, you see the spirit hovered over the waters, praise the Lord, um, the spirit, the word of God. So let's finish this. Hallelujah. And on the seventh day and from all of his work, work, which he had made. So he did it. He did all the work. Praise the Lord. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Remember the sanctification part in, in chapter 2, verse 3. And sanctified it. Be, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the, okay, and then chapter 4 are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now time is interesting we're going to go over that in maybe another video but um and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the land field before it grew for the lord god had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground and so this is a very important part there was not a man to till the ground but wait a minute didn't he make man in his image over here but there's not a man to till the ground okay so but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man, so he's forming man, of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So he's talking about the generations. Okay, so this is him talking about 
things now. So and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, okay? And man became a living soul. And the, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And, and there he put the man whom he formed. He formed the man, he put him in the garden. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that, that is planted, that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst, I love this part, in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden, so out of the garden of Eden, a river's going out um, to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. So I live, grew up in mountains and rivers and, and lakes and um, a, a river will come down and then sometimes split into other places and go into other places and, and water other places. Um, the name of the first is Pison, that is, is it which compass the whole land of Havaya, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Bedellium and the onyx stone, and the and onyx is black, beloved. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And remember, there was an Ethiopian who got saved by the apostle, um, and it was pretty cool. Anyways, and the name of the third river is Hittakel, that it is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, okay? But, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that ye, thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. We've talked about this before. So the word of God spoke to Adam and Eve and said, Don't eat of this. Or actually, to Adam. Eve wasn't made yet, yet in, in this part of this generations, him telling us the generations. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help me. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for, for Adam, there was not found an helpmeet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. Someone said one time that Adam said, whoa, man. <laughs> like whenever he saw the woman, I thought that was kind of funny. Because God made her and she was beautiful. I'm sure she was very beautiful, the first woman. Hallelujah. And brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And, and there's a place where, where Eve says, um, she says, I'm bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. It was so cool. Anyways, there's no mention of blood, but I'm, we're going to get to something here. Um, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be become be one flesh. Now that's the same way with us, with the Lord Jesus, the Lord in heaven, by his spirit in his body, preserved in his body, one flesh, one spirit, okay? But it's Jesus' is the last Adam. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed, okay? And then we see what happens here. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. But, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So she knew that you would die, because he said, she's just repeating God's word, the commandment that God gave to Adam and Eve. She's repeating the commandment. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. So the serpent is twisting God's word, his commandment to Eve in her ear. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then 
your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and did eat. Uh -oh. And the, uh, the eyes of them both were opened. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. What did Jesus do to the fig tree? Jesus cursed the fig tree, beloved. Okay? Um, in in Because it was not producing fruit. Okay, so that's a very important point. And made them themselves aprons. Now, who made Adam and Eve? God did. Who, who um, made um, the, the, um, the serpent in the garden? God did. God made it. He said he, he made this subtle beast, this cunning serpent, this deceiver um, that twisted, twisted the word and the, his commandment not to eat of it, to tempt her, to beguile her, to seduce her, and to bewitch her. Okay? Very important words to understand. Deceit is beguile. And the Lord God um, called unto Adam and said unto him, Where, where art thou? And he said, I, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded that thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me with to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise its heel, his heel. Now notice there's enmity, and he's going to eat the dust. What was Adam and Eve made of? <laughs> dust. God has shown me some things that are very important for our understanding in these last days so that we don't fall into the trap of the technology and the lying spirits that are out there, beloved. Like the one we watched and we saw in the last video that I encourage everybody to read or watch because the very last video I just did because it goes along with what, this, what the scriptures are saying to us today, what God is saying to us by his spirit. Under the woman, he said, I will greatly um, multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to the hus thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now, first thing, I've had a child. It is very, very painful. Secondly, so he was true. He was telling the truth. He's faithful and true witness. Uh, this is his witness. Secondly, our desires for a husband, um, and we all women want their husband because the way that we're made, um, we the way that we are is, is we desire our husband and we even desire Jesus who is the husbandman of the woman and he shall rule over them. Jesus will rule over us and the husband rules over the woman and, um, and that's why we cover our heads because the, the man is the head of the woman and Jesus is our head. So it's in the same order here, but this time it's a good thing. I mean, it, 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 he made what happened in the garden that was, that was evil. God made it good. Because now, the, the husband is not going to let the woman be defiled, okay, first of all, um, in this new covenant. But let's finish reading what happened in the beginning. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, because Jesus won't, if, if we're, we say, Jesus, let's do this sin, Jesus is not going to do it. He's the head of the woman. He's not going to do it, okay? So it's better because he's incorruptible, beloved. He can't be corrupted. And so this is what happened in the garden. And I don't know, maybe Adam was being loving to his wife because he saw that she was already corrupted and he wanted to save her. Some people say, but let's just read what the text says, what the scriptures say. Um, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded. So there's God's command right there in that verse, that, that verse commanded thee. So we, we, we listen to God's commandments as he gives us by the spirit. In the garden, he was a spirit speaking to Adam and Eve. Um, so thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground. Okay, so this part I really want you to see. Cursed is the ground 
for thy sake. Okay, so the ground is cursed, beloved, and, and it's for our sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Now, thorns can be uh, demons or it can, uh, it can be the gods of the nations, it says. Um, they can come up into the ground, beloved, through the ground. And I've seen it in the spirit. The serpents come up out of the ground. And we know that's, that's a thing that happens naturally. Serpents are in, in holes, in wormholes. But when I saw it in the spirit, it was out of the earth in the spirit and, and this is the problem that we have and why what is going to happen is going to happen and why God has shown me what he showed me praise the Lord for this understanding in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground for out of it was thou taken for dust art thou art and unto dust shalt thou return and Adam called his wife named Eve because she was the mother of all living praise God glory to God hallelujah Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Very important part. So you've got um, the, the spirit, and the, the flesh and bone that Adam and Eve were made of. And then you have these skin coats and clothe them. And the Lord God, God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now, the reason he did that, the skin coats and, and why he put us out of the tree the, there, there is because to preserve us, beloved. Because if we had eaten in that state that we were in, it would not be good, corruptible forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the, gar the ground from whence he was taken. So he dra drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims. And a, fl and a flaming sword, which turn it, turn it, turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, a lot of people um, want to be able to do whatever they want and then go into the garden. Um, but now Jesus is the king of paradise, so you need to go through him, the door. Many people are going, oh, well, we're getting up. We're going up in there. But just remember, uh, you, Jesus can put you out if you go up another way, <laughs> just so you know. That's what the scriptures say. So with that, we want to go to the next part. Um, we're going to go to, so something happened. The serpent, ser something happened with the, the serpent and um, not good. Okay. And that had polluted um, a relationship that we had with the Lord. Um, and I want to make sure that we understand why it's so important that we understand what, what God has done and who we are now in Christ so that we can see and we can have rejoicing and go into the holiest of holies um, through the body and blood of Jesus Christ with faith, knowing that he's already taken care of all of these things for us, um, but also, you know, mortifying the deeds of our own flesh. You know, that's a very important part. So, um... This isn't the one I wanted. Hold on just a second. Da, 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 da. Galatians, that's the one I want to go to. I have everything marked here to be easy, but it's never really easy, you know, <laughs> with these phones. And, and uh, I, I, I prefer a book. Some people use the, the technology to go to the scriptures. And yeah, sometimes I'll look things up, but I rather read it from the Bible. Um, that I hold and carry with me. So we're going to start in, um, uh, let's see, 519. That's where we're going to start. 519. Okay, it says, Now the works of, okay, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we know the flesh does not inherit the kingdom of God, beloved. Hallelujah. For a good reason. Remember, the ground was cursed for our sakes, beloved. And um, 
a lot of people don't understand that, but it's very important that we as saints are not ignorant to the um, devices of the devil and his army. They're trying to make you trust in your flesh and do all things that are fleshly and um, uh, not wait for your Messiah and different things like that, which is not good. Um, let's see. So we'll come back to this one in a minute. Um, for 426. Uh, let's see. Now we're in 1 Corinthians 15. It says, so also in the resurrection of the dead. So the dead, we were dead in our sins and trespasses. It is sown in corruption, beloved. Okay. It is sown in natural body in verse 44. As it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Okay. Um, even up here, let's see. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and it, to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. Beloved, this is very important. Verse 39 says, all flesh is not the same. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, and another of fishes, and another of birds. Now, I was up with Jesus Christ up very high, fishing with him, and fishing in the sky and all the way down to the earth. And we were catching fish. And so I was a woman and he was a man. Plain and simple. So there's man and then there's fishes. Now, Jesus said he'll, he'll make the apostles fishers of men. So, you know, there is a, a, a type of, um, what is it, like a analogy or, a, you know, he's making something like, you know, something that we understand. We know that when we fish, we're catching fish, we're pulling them in the net. Jesus says he's drawing all men to himself, okay? So he's drawing them into, he says he's, he ascends up and he draws all men to himself. So he's fishing and drawing all men. And he gives gifts, praise the Lord. Gifts of the Spirit, hallelujah. So we see that it's sown in corruption. Oh, where is the earthly part? I wanted to show you the earthly part. So natural body, oh wait, where is that? Uh, oh, right there. And which that sowest thou sowest not the, that body that shall be but bare grain it may chance of wheat or some other grain um uh, wait that wasn't that that wasn't it it was the earthly oh right here there are also celestial bodies that's like heavenly like like the sky the birds and bodies terrestrial and terrestrial means earthly so you've got celestial heavenly terrestrial earthly so we are bearing the earthly, okay? It says in the scriptures, we are bearing the earthly. But as a born-again saint, you are a living stone. That means you're living. Praise the Lord. Um, all glory to God, the body of Christ. Let's see. So we did First Corinthians. This is all given me this morning. Praise God, glory to God. 50. Oh, we didn't do 1550. Let's do 1550. Very important scripture. Read the whole thing, all these chapters for yourself. But in these videos, we don't have much time because <laughs> otherwise it takes forever to load. So in verse 50, it says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So, beloved, this is a very important point. Jesus poured out his blood in his water, okay? So the, the life is in the flesh. The, the blood is in, in the flesh. But the spirit quickeneth, okay? We have to understand these. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, okay? We'll read more about that. And it says, well, let's read the whole thing. I love it. <laughs> so flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. So this corruptible will put on incorruption. This mortal will be put on immortality and death will be swallowed up in victory. We already know that we are translated into the kingdom and Jesus is making all things new. We know that. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump, trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible, that's our flesh, must be put must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. 
So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of, of sin is the law. Now that's what they use with laws. These people know that they can make sin stronger, and Egypt relies on the law, it says in the scriptures in the Old Testament, in the Tanakh. Egypt relies on the law to hold other people guilty, but because the way that God says the way that they judge, they will be judged. So all of them that are using the law to stand before a sinner, which you see everywhere with their little stars and everything, not that I'm against, you know, God's, you know, weapons, um, but they will be judged the way they judge others, beloved. Um, and they make the law stronger so that they can put you under sin and bondage, beloved. And that's what Jesus was talking about. He says they they chain people up and they and they, they don't go in themselves and they don't let other people go in because they want a kingdom here. But you know, the kingdom is not very fun. There's an end to it. It's and it and it's destruction. Anyways, so I kind of digress here. So death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is it? Oh, we were out the, uh, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. And Jesus said that he was forgiving people of their sins. He was forgiving them that they would have life and life more abundantly, that they would be released from the bondage of that, that death. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen, beloved. All praise, honor, and glory. A brother said it this way. He said it's like a child. A child doesn't know to do something wrong until uh, you tell them the law. Let's say a child is going out in the street and you say, child, don't go out in the street. That's the law. That's the commandment. You give a commandment, don't go in the street, you could get hurt. It's for your benefit, right? But before that, the kid is just running free and he's, he's okay, okay? Um, and maybe he knows not to go in the, into the street because he's got the spirit. The spirit says, don't go in the street. And he's like, well, can you, nah, I'm not going to go in the street. The law is for the lawless. If he goes in the street, he, God gives the commandment, right? But God also gave the commandment before Eve went to the tree and ate it, okay? And the serpent deceived her. He gave the commandment, but she ate it anyways. That shows the weakness of the flesh, okay? That's why in Christ, it's better because we're incorruptible and it's in his body. We're going to see that here in a minute. But God has the victory, beloved. He wins over all things. And those who want to use the law unlawfully to hold others captive and to hold others under bondage, that is the whole point. That's what Egypt does, even though God gives commandments too. His commandments are not burdensome, it says in the scriptures. His commandments are for our, for our life. But when you're, the law is for the lawless, basically, is what I'm saying. And if you're in the spirit, living after the spirit, you're mortifying the deeds of, deeds of the flesh. You're living after the spirit. If you're born again, you're after the spirit. You're born again. You're in the spirit. Um, God, give, like the apostle gave the, the law, little children have no idols. Now, these are for the born again children. They may have been full-grown men and women, but he was giving a law to children. In the new spirit, in the new creation, in the born-again spirit, they may have been little children. And he was giving them, you know, don't have any idols. They're going to pollute you. You know, don't do that. You're light in the world. Don't cover your, your lamp because you're a lamp now and you're light in the world. Don't cover it with idolatry because um, they understood the law. But by the spirit, he gives it. He didn't give us, he gave a few things, you know, about fornication and things like that to the born again believers, but you must be born again before you even can have that. You must be a child of God before you can have God's commandments as a child and you grow up in his commandments and under all the elements until you come to the fullness of Christ and understanding these things. And that is when you walk in the spirit and, and this, the laws in your heart and your mind. So we got to wash and renew our mind by the washing of the word of God and his spirit. We don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, because he's the good shepherd. He's going to lead us and guide us in the way that we should walk. And that's the wonderful thing. Not with rote memorization or um, even though memorization of the scriptures and meditating on scriptures is good, 
um, it, there, you have to have the spirit, beloved. You have to be born again first. And uh, because in, in the flesh dwelleth no good thing, it says in the scriptures. Um, so with that, let's go to the next thing. All glory to God. Glory to God. So the commandments are good. And the, the commandment, commandments came after they were born again, beloved. So we are, the just shall live by faith. The faithful, we are already saved. We're in faith. Um, and that's where the confusion of, oh, you have to keep the law. And the confusion of the law is that it's by the spirit that, because it says in the scriptures that by refreshing of his spirit, our sins are forgiving, forgiven when the refreshing of the spirit comes and we're walking in that newness of life, that holiness, that righteousness and in joy of the spirit. We're walking in the love of God. And when we do that, sin hurts us and others. Okay, let's say we have an idol and then other people come along and say, oh, you have an idol. Oh, I'll worship it with you. There you just polluted another person. So now there's two people that are polluted, you know, and going after an idol. So that's why the apostles gave that commandment from the spirit, because maybe they saw that coming and by the spirit and they discerned and, and God's like, hey, tell them not to do that because they're my children, <laughs> right? Once you're born again, you're the children of God. So now we are in Second Corinthians and let's see. Gonna make sure I cross out the ones that I already did. All right. Um, 1 Corinthians 15. We did that. We did that. Now we are in 2 Corinthians 1, 9 through 10. All right, beloved. But we had the, the sentence of death in ourselves. We had passed. We had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead. Okay, right there, raiseth the dead. Jesus raised his mortal body from the dead. He raised Lazarus from the dead. He is the savior of the body. We do need a savior of the body, beloved. Very important part of the scriptures, hallelujah. Who delivered us from, the gr from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will deliver us. So a couple of things in that last video, he said, you don't need a deliver. You don't need a Messiah. Don't wait for one is what Obama said. And we see all of these things. It is deception, beloved. Right here, it's very clear. He's already delivered us. Okay. Jesus died for the, for the sins of the world. So his, everyone's written in the Lamb's Book of Life until, unless they are the ones that would reject the truth all the way till their death. Like Saul, he had been sinning and then he believed and he was saved. Um, Judas Iscariot, I don't think he believed and so he was a, a demon, he became a demon in the flesh. Um, and so we see these things. Now, Satan entered into him, he became a vessel of dishonor. So um, this is really important that we need to be delivered, all right? Um, and so he delivered us and he delivers us. So he's going to deliver us and he's already delivered us. So in the spirit, we're delivered. And at the last moment over here, we saw we'll be changed. Corruptible put on incorruption. We know that some brothers and sisters are, um, you know, in the flesh and, and uh, you know, things are happening in the flesh. You know, they're being held under bondage um, because they're living out of the flesh and not the spirit even though they're born again even though they you know God Jesus is their judge you know um, he judges his own household the scriptures say but you know you are his you are born again you're a child of God you may be a disobedient child of God in the flesh working living out of the flesh not mortifying the deeds of the flesh as the scriptures say we should do um, and living in the spirit which is life and peace, beloved. I have peace like a river in my soul. And, and whenever you renew your mind um, and the spirit is, is with you and you are, you are coming from Christ, Christ is speaking through you. That's the bridegroom coming out of the bride. The word of God comes out by the spirit. His spirit is, is the Holy Spirit. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ willing and doing of his good pleasure, of God's pleasure, doing the will of God. Hallelujah. It's awesome. Awesome. So don't trust ourselves, not trusting ourselves, it says in 2 
Corinthians, but understanding the weakness of the flesh, that it's clearly there's a weakness there, and that flesh and blood does not inherit the world to come, will not inherit it. Okay, let's go to the next one. Praise the Lord. This is going to be a long one. It's going to take me a while to, to load it. Oh, well. All glory to God. All glory to God. Um, let's see. Okay, we already did that one. Let's see. Where are we? There's Peter. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. For all this understanding he's given us. He's with us. You know, he is with us. And that's something that we should be rejoicing about. Okay, and we are in First Peter. Hallelujah. We're going to go to 2, verse 5, and then 2, 24. So, 2. We're dividing the word of truth, beloved. It says, and read all of the chapter. <laughs> I only have so much time. Ye also as lively stones. Oh, first, let's go up to, yeah, that's it. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the God by Jesus Christ. So it's by Jesus Christ. Everything is made in and through the word of God and held by the word. Okay, held by the word. Um, when the word says, yes, go get my, my children, he's going to come get us. You know what I mean? Um, and then we're going to keep reading. Wherefore, also it is contained in the scriptures. Behold, I lay in Sion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. So his faith was precious because his faith was great. And that's the shield of faith that we carry is the armor of God. It's his faith because our faith sometimes will fail us. And that's just the truth in our, in our mind, our heart. We can, we can be troubled by the world and the things of the world. Tribulation can come, but we have to understand that it's his armor, the armor of God and the faith is the one that persevered through the cross. You know, he was troubled and he still didn't sin, beloved. He was being crucified and he didn't return an answer to the wicked um, of wickedness because he he wasn't he wasn't um, like us at all. He was Emmanuel, God with us. So we have to rely on his faith too, beloved. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded, beloved. We won't even be ashamed. It says in the scriptures. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed. So they're disobedient. Disallowed. The same is made the head of the corner. So he's our head. And a stone of stumbling. And a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word. Being disobedient. whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So this is our nation. We are, we are citizens of heaven, beloved, already. Okay? We are ambassadors of Christ. And where's Christ's kingdom? His, his kingdom is not of this world. <laughs> Even though he owns this world, and this is his garden, he owns everything in it. He even owns the wicked. He owns the keys of death. He possesses the gates of his enemies. Okay, beloved? He, he owns the gates of his enemies. He possesses it. He has the keys of death and hell, it says in the scriptures. When he 